Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to show you how easy it is to forget, but also to apply alt attributes to your images. Now, alt attributes for images, they basically describe the purpose of that image, so that somebody that uh, has a vision impairment, they can rely on an oral browser or a, or a braille browser to read and understand and interact with the web page. So, Students in my 295 Web Dev 2 class, they're going to have a component where they need to, you know, look for the web and look for some accessibility issues with websites and look for usability issues with websites and how they might go about fixing those. I didn't have to look around for very long, and I came across this web page over at OSU Cascades. And they have this section here, where do our grads work? And they've got the images for various uh, employers for students and natural resources, U.S. Forest Services, Deschutes County, U.S. Geological Survey. None of these images have alt attributes, and there's also no surrounding text that describes the images. So somebody who has a vision impairment would really not be able to easily interact and understand what this information is. And since this information is only presented in this area of the page, it kind of creates that unequal playing field, that unlevel playing field, where some students have access to the information, others don't, and so forth. So what does that really mean? Well. Um, there is a guide so over at WebAIM, and I'll have some links to resources in the video description about the, the, the purpose and the value of including alt attributes. So we've got that information, but it can also be pretty important too. This is a case from back in 2006, 2007, where Target received a class action lawsuit because they left out alt attributes. And this is like 15 years ago, and they ended up paying a $6 million settlement and they had to update their web pages. So if you have a business website or a school website, any kind of site, especially if that site is um, has a wide audience, a large audience, and is funded in part by the government, then you want to adhere to the rules of Section 508 of the Americans with Disabilities Act. One of those rules is in how you describe images. So let's see what we can do in order to resolve that. Now I'm going to jump back over to the OSU website here. There we go. And I've got the source code open just so you can see how this looks. So basically, here's that section with all of those images. So I've got all these images here. Um, none of them have alt attributes. And you can see there's no other text. The images are contained within a div tag. OK, so let me jump back over here. I'll pick on this uh, geological survey one. Let me just uh, I'll copy the image link. And I already have a page set up. Nothing too fancy on it here. And although I might prefer to use the figure tag, it doesn't really matter. Div is fine. And I'll give it a class. And this will be, um, I'll just say, image2. Just kind of generic. And I'm going to put in my image tag in here, source attribute. Now I'm basically hot linking an image, uh, referring to an image that's on a different server. So that should load up. And in fact, I'm going to leave that just as it is. Let's jump over to my web page and see if that is displaying. There we go. Ah, so there it is, and this page is pretty zoomed in. Let me, uh, oh, it's not zoomed in that much. This is just a really big image. So I think I'll go ahead and, and style that up. But clearly that image is displaying on my page. So let's see, that's in my class image two. I'm just gonna head up to my styles here. Dot image two, any image in there. Let's go ahead and set the uh, max width to 250 pixels. Still bigger than what we need, but good enough to get that impression across. So that's exactly what OSU Cascades did. They simply displayed that image. Now, of course, their image is a hyperlink. So let's go ahead and do that too. And it doesn't really matter where we link to. href, I'll just do a dummy hyperlink. And we'll make sure that closing anchor tag is right down there. So now our image is a hyperlink. However, let's also put in a little bit more text description with the alt attributes. This is the uh, US Geological Survey. That's all it takes right there. That would be enough to avoid probably the big lawsuits. Um, just putting in that little alt attribute description. So now when I go back to my page, yeah, nothing looks terribly different. It is a hyperlink now, by the way. It has that alternate text. Now in some browsers, at least they used to, when you hovered over an image, the alt text might appear in a little screen tip, but that's not important for us. Remember, the alt text is not there for your sighted visitors. It's there as a, as a tool, as an aid for 
your visitors that have vision impairments. Now, in addition, or instead of sometimes having this alt text here, probably in addition is better, you might want to include just a little bit of extra text. So I could do a break and also write in US Geological Survey right in there. And we can provide some text in addition. Now, we could clean that up a little bit. So we can just say, we'll just head up to our styles dot image two and um, and we could put in something like text align center font size and put in something kind of small nine points there we go so now we've got that image being displayed notice my image did move to the center images are centered kind of like uh, text and I've got that text under there so now I have the alt attribute for the image plus I've got some text that is in the vicinity and related to that image. So now it's going to be a little bit more clear to users what that what the purpose of that image is. Pretty easy fix to make, right? All you need to do is make sure your images have alt descriptive text that describes the purpose of that image. Be descriptive with your alt attributes and any surrounding text. Thanks for hanging out with me.